Well, good evening, everyone, and and all of those of you who are watching from afar, like Marina's mom. I'm on there too. Oh, what's that? My dad is there too. Hi, Mr. Strobo. <laughs> Anyone else? Should say hi. Hi. Yeah, supposedly. Hi, Ash, Hello, not Nikos. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Brad. So, uh, welcome everyone. This is uh, the fall 2022 uh, evening of scenes. I've been doing this for a long time, uh, 16 or 17 years, and. Uh, this is typically a celebration each semester of the work done in performance classes. And uh, this semester, the classes uh, in performance are the voice and articulation class and uh, intermediate acting. And uh, the uh, voice and articulation class, it has half majors, as you can see on your, uh, on your programs there, and half are not. And uh, so I think you will be amazed uh, by uh, the talent that is uh, that exists all over campus here, I'm I'm always amazed and pleased, and we've had a lot of fun in both classes, and uh, hope to share with you some of the work we've been doing in the classes. So, uh, oh, I'm Trish Halsall, and I'm the instructor for both of these classes, and. Uh, the, uh, I just wanted to give you an, a little overview of the projects that are going to be featured here tonight. Uh, the, uh, there are going to be monologues from the voice and articulation class. They've been working all semester on all uh, aspects of voice from um, pitch and inflection to articulation and, um, and uh, working on a non-distinct dialect. And uh, so hopefully uh, you'll, you'll hear some good projection. You won't need to, uh, uh, to ask anyone to repeat after this. And um, this is their final project. They've, been, they've done a lot of other projects through the semester. And uh, the other project featured in the voice and articulation class was one. I, I thought that these were really fun videos. Uh, the project was they were to find um, an animal video specifically. And uh, you know those weird ones you find on YouTube, uh, just animals doing weird things. And then they were to remove whatever background in sound there was and replace it with a script of their own and their own voices. So uh, they were asked to uh, come up with two characters for the scene. And some people uh, actually did more than two, but I think you'll find those fun. The uh, intermediate acting class has been working on uh, well, there are two scenes from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? It's a, a classic in American theater by Edward Albee, and uh, these are pretty sophisticated characters, uh, and not in, in terms of, their, of the character themselves, but the script is very, very uh, dense. And, uh, and so uh, they've been doing a lot of work in uh, understanding the script and applying that to the characterization. And uh, so you'll see two scenes from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. We have five people in class. We just rotated out one of the characters. Uh, the other thing we've been working on in, in the intermediate acting class is improv. And so tonight, um, I don't know what will happen, but uh, there will be some improv. And uh, the actors have not really much of an idea of what I'm going to ask them to do tonight. And then uh, we'll have the fu finale, which is everyone should know how to land a pie. And uh, so we did some practice on that uh, earlier in the semester, and we'd like to share that with you too. So uh, please uh, enjoy the evening, and we're going to start with Spencer. You can't build a house without nails and wood. 
If you don't want a house built, hide the nails in wood. If you don't want a man unhappy politically, don't give him two sides to a question to worry him. Give him one. Better yet, give him none. Let him forget there is such a thing as war. If the government is inefficient, top-heavy, and tax-mad, better it be all those than that people worry over it. Peace, Montag. Give the people contests they win by remembering the words to more popular songs or the names of state capitals or how much corn Iowa grew last year. Cram them full of non-combustible data. Chuck them so damn full of facts they feel stuck yet absolutely brilliant with information. Then they'll feel their thinking. They'll get a sense of motion without moving. And they'll be happy because facts of that sort don't change. Don't give them any slippery stuff like philosophy or sociology to tie things up with. That way lies melancholy. Any man who can take a TV wall apart, put it back together can, and most men can nowadays, is happier than any man who tries to slide rule measure and equate the universe, which just won't be measured or equated without making man feel bestial and lonely. I know. I've tried it. To hell with it! So bring on your clubs and parties, your acrobats and magicians, your daredevils, jet cars, motorcycle helicopters, your sex and heroin, more of everything to do with automatic reflex. If the drama is bad, if the play is hollow, if the film says nothing, sting me with the theremin loudly. I'll think I'm responding to the play when it's only a tactile reaction to vibration. But I don't care. I just like solid entertainment. <laughs> oh, I guess, dear, I should be home soon enough. It's a lot of stuff going over to task, David. Of course I'll be safe, dear, you know me. Oh, I can't believe this. Carla, 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 that cut off to us, the IRS got up to us, we gotta get in a lobby home in a few minutes, get all the documents, Carla, I need you to burn all the documents, look at it. I'll be there in a minute, you better have this ready, we can't let our vice-fine business go under, get out of the way, out of my way, dear people, come on, is, is everything alright, it looks like quite the spill you just took there, I'll be fine, you just gotta stop that guy, hey, yeah, yeah, more cardio, Carla, you still have everything ready, Right, well, it's gonna look like I'm gonna have to hold them off. I'll do what I can. Don't do anything stupid! Listen, sir, I know what you're here for, and I can promise you that it will not end well for you in this situation. I don't think you understand what you're walking into here. I am a man with nothing left to lose, and you're coming here to ask me for what's left. Uh, listen, man, it's like 20 bucks worth of taxes. You can't pay that seriously? It's really not that much. <laughs> You'll come here to my home and you insult me with you and your organization. Quite frankly, sir, I've had enough of you, and I want you gone. <laughs> <laughs> And many films I would, where I was taken to brothers was like no sin I ever videoed before. I was bound up in a straitjacket, and my Gulliver was strapped to a headrest with like wires running away from it. Then they clamped like lid locks on my eyes so that I could not shut them no matter how hard I tried. It seemed a bit crazy to me, but I let them get on with it. If I was to be a free young Malik again in a fortnight's time, I would put up with much in the meantime. Oh, my brothers. So far, the first film was a very good piece of professional sin. Almost like it was done in Hollywood. The sounds were a real horror show. You could slew see the screams and moans very realistic. You can even get the heavy breathing and panting of the tall choking Maliks at the same time. And then, what do you know? Soon our dear old friend, the red red vino on tap, the same in all the places, like it was put up by the same big firm, began to flow. It was beautiful. 
It's funny how the colors of the real world only seem really real when you video them on the screen. Gustav, remember your training. We've been over this. They give it. I will give you anything you want if it means that I will have to stop shaking just to get kibble. Look at me. I was bred for hunting and now I'm reduced to this just to get some food. We'll get many kibble for this. Good boy. Come on, man. I told you I didn't even want to do this. Without me, even asking. Good boy, Gustav. Many kibble will be awarded in your bowl tonight. I could do so much better. I could be out in the wild hunting rabbits. But instead, here I am. Biting you. Get away from me. <laughs> Academy for Young Ladies, college. But Daddy and Miss Muff got together real quick and put an end to it. Annulled, which is a laugh because theoretically you can't get an annulment if there's been an entrance. <laughs> so there I was, re virginized, finished at Miss Muff's, where they were down one more gardener's boy. A real shame that was. And I came back here and I sort of sat around for a little while. I was hostess, I took care of Daddy, and it was nice. It was really nice. Yes, yes. What do you mean, yes, yes? How would you know? Lover. I mean, it was about this time that I got the idea that I'd marry into the college, which didn't seem to be quite as stupid as it turned out. I mean, Daddy had a sense of history, of continuation. Why don't you come over here and sit next to me? I don't think I should. I... Suit yourself. Anyways, Daddy had a sense of history, of continuation. He always had the, the idea in his head that he would groom somebody to take over once he retired. A succession, you know? Yes, I do. And it's natural enough. When you've made something, you want to have somebody to give it to. So I started looking for prospects with the new men. An heir, if you will. I mean, it wasn't necessarily Daddy's idea that I had to marry the guy. It was something that I had in the back of my mind. I wasn't the albatross or anything like that. You didn't have to get me to win the prize. And a lot of the new men were married, naturally. Sure. Like you, baby. Like you, baby. <sighs> and then along came George. And along came George bearing hooch. What are you doing now, Martha? I'm telling a story. Sit down, you might learn something. All right, love. You come back. That's right. Dear, he's come back. Yeah. I see. So, where was I? Oh, I'm so glad. Shh. Oh, yeah. And along came George, who was young, intelligent, bushy-tailed, sort of cute, if you can imagine it. And younger than you. And younger than me. By six years. By six years. That doesn't bother me, George. So along he came, bright-eyed into the history department, and you know what I did, the dumb cluck that I am? You know what I did? I fell for him. That's nice. Yes, she did. And you should have seen it, too. She'd sit outside my room on the lawn at night, and she'd howl and claw at the turf. I couldn't work. I actually fell for him. It. That there. Martha's a romantic at heart. That I am. So long he came, bright-eyed into the history department. And the match seemed practical, too. 
You know, Daddy had always been looking for somebody to retire once he took over, and it just seemed so perfect that I had married George. That's enough, Martha. It just seemed so nice. Now, you've already sprung a leak about you know what. What? What? The apple of our eye, the sprout, the little bugger, our son. And I warn you, Martha, if you start in on that other business, that's going to make me angry. Oh, it is, is it? I warn you. You what? I warn you. Do you really think we have to go? <laughs> then I stand warned. Anyways. I married the SOB. I had it all planned out. He was the groom. He was going to be groomed. He'd take over one day. First, he'd take over the history department, and then he'd take over the college. That's the way it was supposed to be. Are you getting angry, baby? That's the way it was supposed to be. And Daddy seemed to think it was a pretty good idea, too, until he watched for a couple of years. Are you getting angrier? until he watched for a couple of years and thought that maybe George didn't have it in him. That he didn't have the stuff. Stop it, Martha. The hell I will. You see, George isn't particularly aggressive. He doesn't have the push. In fact, he's more of a, a flop. A great, big, fat flop. I said stop it, Martha. I hope that was an empty bottle. You don't want to waste good liquor. Not on your salary. Not on associate professor salary. I mean, he'd be no good at fundraising, at trustees dinners. He doesn't have much personality, which was disappointing for Daddy, as I'm sure you can imagine. So here I am, stuck with this flop, this bog in the history don't go department. On. Who's married to Don't go on, Martha. Daughter, who's supposed to be All right, somebody, then. Not just some who's nobody. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Somebody who's so damn Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Somebody who doesn't have an in it to anybody brought him. All right, George. Who's afraid, afraid of Virginia Woolf? Woolf. Virginia, 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 Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. I said Woolf. stop it. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to vomit. I'm going to be sick. Oh, for God's sake. Say Jesus! We lose, we take, we catch, and we get caught. We conform, and we make others conform. We do nothing but cycle between those roles. Fight when we can, and make sure not to lose. But as hard as we fight, we will lose it all in the end, no matter what. The people we loved and were loved by We'll all die. Someday, we'll be forgotten. To live is to be unhappy. It's futile. Even so, small and grotesque as I am, short and cruel as this life might be, I still crawl forward. I still search for beauty. Because it's worth it. To keep choosing, to keep being chosen. Oh, yes, it's so good and full of uh, Sir, food. sir, uh, we're recording. Oh, and um, oh. Hello there, humans. My name is Blazin. I'm an evil genius. Mom, stop petting me. I'm trying to do my intro. Maybe you're going to edit that out, right? I don't know how to edit. Okay, good. Anyway, here I am in my little evil outfit. It's so fancy and stylish and sleek. 
It's perfect for someone like me. Hmm. Now let's see. It appears the humans in this house have laid a trap for me, trying to lure me through this obstacle course of all these treats. Hmm. Luckily, I am so smart and I did not solve this. But just because I'm nice, Minion, how would you solve this? Well, it seems like you could just go around. Excellent suggestion. I will take that and <laughs> use it myself. Uh, not that I didn't think of it already, but, you know, I just like testing wow, it. you're so smart. <laughs> hmm. It appears they've put it in a box this time, trying to make me look stupid for not being able to solve this. <laughs> Oh, Minion. Yeah? Again, I already know what I'm doing here, but what would you suggest someone like me do? Well, I don't know, sir. It looks pretty hard and challenging. Yes, it's impossible. You know, totally impossible. You know, no way to solve this at all. Really, not at all. Blast. It appears I've been defeated. Wait, Minion, why are you recording oh, sir, this? You're a dancer, sir. No, no, no. Stop recording it. Help me oh, here. No, I don't want to keep dancing like this. You're pretty good at it. Minion, please, oh, Minion. Nice, sir. Okay, I'll help you. I'll turn it off. Help me. <laughs> My loving people, we have been persuaded by some who are careful of our safety, to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear. I have always so behaved myself that under God, I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal hearts and goodwill of my subjects. Therefore, I am come amongst you at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved to live and to die amongst you all, to lay down for my God, for my kingdom, and for my people, my honor and my blood, even in the dust. I think foul scorn that any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of our realm. And I am, therefore, will take up arms. I, myself, will be your general, judge, and rewarder of all your virtues in the field. I know already, for your forwardness, you are deserving rewards and crowns. And I do assure you, on the word of a prince, these shall be duly paid. In the meantime, my lieutenant general shall be in my stead, whom never commanded a more noble and worthy subject. I do not doubt, but by your loyalty to my general, by your concord in the camp, and by your valor in the field, we shall soon have a most famous victory over these enemies of my God, of my kingdom, and of my people. Streets coming to his blind. I don't want to miss the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there. Oh, give me one second. Oh, yeah, that feels good. This never ends good. Oh, yeah. This rope is so helpful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't got good scratch in years. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! This ruined my chance of having children. <laughs> oh, with luck, hopefully. We don't need any more yous in this world. Once I stop hurting, I'm gonna eat you for that. Good luck catching oh. Your balls are as black as those berries. <laughs>
Because, you know, noise complaints nowadays. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I make a pretty good living. <laughs> Five grand a year. Five grand! Hey. <laughs> are, are, are you sure then we're going to be able to be here then, Mr. Five Grand? Oh, I sure do diddly do. <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur, so. Uh, <laughs> and which hole does that go in? What do you think? It goes through the mouth. Like, like, like through, through this portion. Duh, how do you think dinosaurs eat, silly? <laughs> I, well, I, am a, I am a paleontologist. You saw my profile, so I know a few things I've so you really get me is what I'm hearing. <laughs> sure. Sure. Man, this is the best day I've had in years. <laughs> and how many dates have you had in the past few years? Like, I'd say at least one. At <laughs> least one. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is a good... Because if you're body shaming me for how I look, this is not going to work out. <laughs> body shame. Well, I'm just getting this stare. Like... Well, I wouldn't know how to look it. All I can see is that there's a mouth on the table. We can't even get water on the table because you're going to take it out with your big head right there. Well, you I'll just drink... You keep sinking your in the water. So. I'll just drink the water up. I got a big mouth, which means a lot of water can go in the mouth. <laughs> it's simple. A paleontologist. Is that even a scientist? Because I know science. I went to college. Where did you go? Clown school? No, I'm a dinosaur. There is no school for dinosaurs. Duh. Right, right. My bad, my bad. I just remember at a young age, my mom was like, let's go kill those triceratops. And then we went to, you know, like where your mom takes you to work day. 
like that, and then we ate some triceratops. It was great. And what does a triceratops look like? It looks like a dinosaur because it's a dinosaur. <laughs> that extinct, went extinct like billions, millions of years ago? No, that's all of hopes. We exist. There's more than just me. Oh, there's more than me. What the? How am I supposed to eat other dinosaurs if there's only me? <laughs> Alright, well, I think you should put together a list of all the other dinosaurs and you should give it to me. So, me, as a paleontologist, I can make sure I personally never come co into contact with any. You know, I was trying to make this a good day. I was gonna stop the battle between humans and dinosaurs, <laughs> but I just don't think this is gonna work out anymore. It was working out? <laughs> I thought it was. And you're just playing with my feelings now, aren't you? No, I'm playing with your stupid costume. It's not a costume. It's me. What would you know of struggle, perfect son? When have you fought against the mutilation of your mind? When have you had to do anything other than tally compliances and polish your armor? The people of your world named you Great One. The people of mine called me Slave. Which one of us landed on a paradise of civilization to be raised by a foster father, Rabute? Which one of us was given armies to lead after training in the halls of the McCraggan High Riders? Which one of us inherited a strong, cultured kingdom? And which one of us had to rise up against a kingdom with nothing but a horde of starving slaves? Which one of us was a child enslaved on a world of monsters? <laughs> Listen to your blue-clad wretches yelling, Courage and honor! Courage and honor! Courage and honor. Do you even know the meaning of those words? Courage is fighting the kingdom which enslave you. No matter that their armies outnumber yours 10,000 to one, you know nothing of courage. Honor is resisting a tyrant when all others suckle and grow fat on the hypocrisy he feeds them. You know nothing of honor. The ideal man, 
Oh, the ideal man should talk to us as if we were goddesses and treat us as if we were children. He should refuse all of our serious requests and gratify every one of our whims. He should encourage us to have caprices and forbid us to have missions. He should always say much more than he means and mean much more than he says. He should never run down other pretty women. That would mean that he has no taste or, or make one suspect that he has too much. No, he should be kind to all of them and say that somehow they don't attract him. Whenever we ask him a question about anything, he should tell us an answer all about ourselves. He should praise us on all the qualities he knows we doesn't, he knows we don't have, and be pitiless, quite pitiless, on reproaching us for all of the virtues we never would have dreamed of possessing. He should shower on us all the things we don't want, and be perfectly ready to have a scene whenever we want one. He should be persistent, he should persistently compromise us in public and treat us with the absolute respect when we are alone. He should be ready at a moment's notice to be miserable, absolutely miserable, and overwhelm us with just reproaches at every 20 minutes. He should be perfectly violent every 30 minutes and be ready to leave us forever at a quarter to eight when we have to go and get ready for dinner. Mm, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. I think I'm gonna tear it up on the dance floor. Mm, gotta really stretch out. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, is that cutie Carla I see? Man, I really gotta go talk to her and dance with her. Mm. Hey, 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 hey. Carla, it's me, Jeff. I know you can see me over there. Uh, what does he want? Uh, Hey, Carla, yeah, you gotta come over here and check me out, girl. Like, I got all these new moves, crazy dancings, and you're never gonna believe this. Look at this. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Jeff, <laughs> how did you get your hair to look like that? Well, you're never gonna believe me, but uh, I got this new two-in-one shampoo. Oh yeah, it makes me feel pretty good. Yeah, come check it out. Uh, oh my gosh, Jeff, is uh, I think you kind of missed this spot. Uh, you look a little ridiculous. Hey, Carla, why don't you come dance with us? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see you later, Jeff. Uh, bye. <laughs> Suck. <laughs> missed it again. <laughs> I used to drink brandy. You used to drink Bergen, too. Shut up, Barbara. Oops. Hmm? Nothing. Nothing. You two men have it out when we were gone. George tell you his side of things. He bring you to tears, huh? Well, no. 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 What we actually did was, well, we sort of danced around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cute. Oh, I love dancing. He didn't mean that, honey. Well, I didn't think he did. Two grown men dancing. <laughs> Heavens! So you mean he didn't start on about how he would have amounted to something if it hadn't been for Daddy? How his high moral sense didn't even allow him to try and better himself? No? No. And he didn't run on about how he tried to publish a goddamn book, but Daddy would have let him. Please, Martha. A book? No. Please, just a book. <laughs> just a book. Please, Martha. A book? What book? Well, I guess you didn't get the whole sad story. What's the matter with you, George? You give it up. No. No. No, I just have to find some new way to fight you, Martha. 
guerrilla tactics, maybe? Internal subversion? I don't know, something. Well, you figure it out. And let me know when you do. All righty, love. Let's have some dancing. I'd like some dancing. Honey. I would. I'd like some dancing. Honey. I want some. I want some dancing. All right. <laughs> For heaven's sake, we'll have some dancing. Oh, good. I just love dancing. Don't you? Yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. Gee, gee. I dance like the wind. Yeah. Martha had her daguerreotype in the paper once, so 25 years ago. Seems she took second place in one of them seven-day dancing competitions. Biceps all bulging, holding up her partner. Would you put on a record and shut up? Certainly, love. How are we going to work this? Mixed doubles? <laughs> well, you certainly don't think I'm going to dance with you, do you? Oh, no. Not with him here, anyway. Not with Twinkle Toes here, either. I'll dance with anyone. I'll even dance by myself. <laughs> all right, kitties. Shoes up and hit the sack. I dance like the wind. Honey. Honey. All right, George, cut it out. Honey. Cut it out, George. What, Martha? All right, you son of a bitch. Honey. What, Martha? What? You son of a bitch. Honey. You stopped. Why did you stop? I thought it was fitting, Martha. Oh, you did, huh? Honey. Stop it! I like to dance. You don't want me to. I like you to dance. Why don't you oh, find you don't. something, Martha? Martha's going to run things now. Little lady's going to lead the band. Why are you always at me when I'm having a good time? I'm sorry, honey. Just shut up. Martha's going to pin on some rhythm she understands. Sacre du printemps, maybe. Hi, sexy. Ooh. <laughs> Choose it, Martha. Do your stuff. You're damn right. <laughs> you want to dance with me, Angel Tits? What did you call my wife? Oh, boy. No. If I can't do my turn to dance, then I don't want to dance with them. Okay, I'll let's just... go. Let's go. Hmm? Oh, hi. Hi. We'll just sit here and watch. That's right. You are strong, aren't you? Uh huh. <laughs> I like that. Uh -huh. They're dancing like they've danced before. It's a familiar dance. They both know it. Don't be shy. I'm not. It's a very old ritual, monkey members. Old as they come. I, I don't know what you mean. I like the way you move. I like the way you move, too. Nice. I'm surprised George didn't give you his side of things. Well, he didn't. This surprises me. Does it? Yes. He usually does when he gets the chance. Well, what do you know? Well, it's really a very sad story. You have ugly talents, Martha. Is it? It would make you weep. Hideous gifts. Is that so? Don't encourage her. Encourage me. I warn you. Don't encourage her. Go ahead. He warns you. Don't encourage me. I heard him. Tell me more. Well, Georgie boy had lots of big ambitions, in spite of something funny in his past. Martha. With which Georgie turned into a novel, his first attempt, and also his last. Oh, I rhymed. I rhymed. Yeah, you're right. Tell me more. Well, Daddy took a look at Georgie's novel. You're looking for a punch in the mouth. You know that, Martha? Oh, yeah. And he was very shocked by what he read. Was he now? A novel all about a naughty boy child. I will not tolerate this. Oh, can <laughs> Naughty boy child. <laughs> Who killed his mother and father dead. That's enough, Martha. That's it. The dancing's over. Hey. Go on now. What do you think you're doing, huh? Violence. <laughs> Violence. And Daddy said, you don't think I'm going to let you publish this, do you? You, you will not say this. 
And Daddy said, you, will, you don't think I'm going to let you publish this crap, do you? Not on your life, baby. Not while you're teaching here. You publish this, this goddamn book, and you're out on your ass. That's it. The game's over. Imagine it. A teacher at a respected, conservative institution like this, in a place like New Carthage, publishing a book like that. If you respect your position here, young man, young whippersnapper, <laughs> you'll just withdraw that manuscript. You will not say this. The hell I won't. Keep away from me. Hey, wait a minute now. And do you want to know the clincher? Do you want to know what big, brave Georgie boy said to Daddy? This isn't a novel at all. No, sir. This isn't a novel at all. Not a novel. No, sir. This really happened. To me. I'll kill you, hey? All right. Murderer! Murderer! All right, let's all calm down now. We've played a game of humiliate the host. How about a nice game of get the guests? It has been said many times by many thinkers, and I quote here the words of the 20th century Russian philosopher Nikolai Lossky. If a personality is not directed at values higher than the self, corruption and decay inevitably take hold. Or if you will permit me to share a personal observation, we can only experience true spiritual satisfaction not in seizing but in refusing to cease. In other words, through self-limitation. Today, it appears to us as something wholly unacceptable, constraining and even repulsive, because we have grown accustomed to, we have grown unaccustomed to what for our ancestors have been in the habit born of necessity. They lived with far greater external constraints and had far fewer opportunities. The paramount, importance of self-restraint has only in this century arisen in its pressing entirety before mankind. And yet, taking into account the various mutual links running through contemporary life, it is only through self-restraint that we can gradually cure both our economic and political life, albeit with much difficulty. Today, not many will readily accept this principle for themselves. But with the increasing complex modernity of our society, to limit ourselves is the only true path for preservation for us. And yet we have not taken into these trials of the 20th century in vain. Let us hope we have not taken into these trials in the 20th century in vain. Let us hope we have, after all, been tempered by these trials, and our hard-won firmness will somehow be passed along to the following generations.
You are worthless, no good piece of oil. You think this is time to pick up your feet from me, huh? Oh, my God. You boy. Then you decided. Oh, oh, now you're dumping my quarters, huh? If I do what's best for the case, the two of you would be in the bar. Oh, no, not the bar. <laughs> For some men, these are the most precious. But I believe beneath them, there is something more precious than these. They are driven to pursue it, and they pursue it solely for their own sake, no other. One man's dream can hold dominion over the entire world for one who dedicates his life to the forging of a single sword. While many can pursue their dreams in solitude, other dreams are like great storms blowing hundreds, even thousands of dreams apart in their wake. <clears throat> dreams breathe life into men and can cage them in suffering. Men live and die by their dreams, but long after they've been abandoned, they still smolder deep within men's hearts. Some see nothing more than life and death. They are dead, for they have no dreams. They are my able soldiers, it's true. They are dedicated comrades who sacrifice themselves so that my dream may be real. But that does not make them friends. In my mind, a true friend never relies on another's dream. The man who would be my friend must have his own reason for living beyond me. And he should put his heart and his soul into protecting his dream. He must never hesitate to defend it, even against me. For a man to be my friend, he must be equal to me in all respects. Yeah. Okay, so um, oh, we'll need a 
So um, one of the improvs we, we do it in class is uh, one that uh, requires uh, real attention to your partner because you and your partner actually become one. So um, Lucy and, and uh, <laughs> Lucy and Alyssa, you're going to be one, and Brad and my, Spencer my <laughs> are going to be one. And uh, one is going to share, uh, is going to be the, be the face you? and voice, and the other is going to be hands. So uh, let's, let's demonstrate. How, how do we do this? How do we do this? Okay, so here we go. Uh, yeah, shake hands. Oh. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. <laughs> Great. All right, so um, now, we're, now that we've got that settled, here's your improv. Uh, you uh, <laughs> you are uh, you are lovers. <laughs> you are lovers who have been separated uh, for uh, oh weeks. Uh, oh, for weeks. Oh, weeks. Okay. In weeks. fact, you both drifted away at sea, and uh, you are coming together for your first meal. Okay. Together. Okay. Uh, you haven't eaten, in fact, in two weeks. Are we, are we sitting or are we standing? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So, uh, yeah, uh, have a seat. Uh, Marina is uh, going to serve. And, uh, How do we do the seat? Am I just going to squat? Yeah. You have a seat. All right. Uh, will you bring the food? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 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 
Man, so we should have put this on the top. I'll take care of this. Uh, Forget about the pie. That's, uh, that takes uh, Oh, oh I, I think it does. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holy I'm cow. really satisfied. Where's my hand? Um, I'm sort of satisfied, frankly. Uh, no pie? Do you want to do pie? I'm I'm pie. Yes. Let's do pie. I want to do pie. Can I get my hands? Green. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so much pie. So what's our piece? Go get your pie. social norms. Uh, I mean, how often do you get to slobber spaghetti, right? <laughs> so, um, the, the whole point of, uh, of eating also is that it, it's full of social norms, right? You, you have these expectations of how you're supposed to behave when you eat. So, uh, uh, that's a great way to explore. And in acting class, we uh, we have a day we call popcorn and peanuts, and uh, some of you have probably experienced that who've been in my acting class before. And it's a day where we ignore those norms and uh, and and experiment with what it's like to not have many. <laughs> so uh, so it's eating and allowing things to fall on the floor, uh, disregarding uh, food for what it actually is, sustenance, and uh, just uh, letting go. Next, though, is pie. Uh, and I'm setting this up with, uh, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Uh, they have come up with some scenarios in which pie is served. Uh, but here come the pies. Uh, Hi. 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 There's an art to pie, and uh, the art of pie involves uh, setup and placement. <laughs> and uh, we used real whipped cream the last time and discovered that uh, dairy is just so like dairy <laughs> forever. Dairy is just leaking into dairy your eyes. Dairy isn't great for your eyes. Not so, good. Each of them have a, a scenario that they're going to be working through, uh, beginning with uh, Spencer. You're first, aren't you? Yep. All right. Lucy. Yes, Spencer. We've known each other for a while. Mm -hmm. I figure you're you're we've probably known each other long enough that I can test like a bit on you. Like I'm yeah, trying to do yeah, some comedy of show thing. Okay, so. You know, I, I, I got this gig at the comedy club. Of course. And I'm thinking about doing like this kind of like a clown act, but it's okay. like interactive with the audience, right? Okay, yeah. So basically I'm like, you know, doing my bit, and I'm like, oh, hey, you know, hey, you come, come here, come here, come here. And then they come up, you know, and I'm talking to them, and I'm doing this like, this whole clown mm -hmm. show, right? You know, pull the pull the flowers out yeah. from other, you know, out, out of the out of the sleeve, mm -hmm. and, and don't worry about the pie, you know, it's, it's kind of immaterial. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm doing the thing, you know, yeah. with, the, with the ribbons and none, and then... Oh. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's a pretty good bit, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's tasty. It's good pie? Yeah, it's pie. <laughs> All right. It's a pie. So, I've been working out 
I've been getting these bicep curls in, but I've had this craving for pie. Uh, and every hundred reps, I take one little lick of the pie. Yeah. I'm on my 2,000th rep, man. I can do it. Oh. Ah. Ah. I'm sorry, man. I was just going for my 2,100th rep. That was a good goal. I can see why you were going for it. You know? You should do it more. You're right. Ah. <laughs> Yes? Yes. Yeah. 